Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us at this live stream. I would like to begin today by acknowledging that we are joining you from the traditional unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples. Now, normally I would have your bright and smiling faces in front of me, but I don't have that today. But please tell me something about yourself or tell us where you're joining from in the chat. There will be many times for you to participate, even though I can't have you up on stage. Now, balloons can be kind of scary for some people, and I'm kind of one of them. Sometimes I will scream a little bit. Uh, don't worry, it's all part of the show. Um, if you guys are afraid of balloons, don't worry. You can turn down the volume at any time you think a balloon might pop. Normally, I tell you to close your ears, but that's one of the benefits of this live stream. Alrighty, I'm gonna try to pop this balloon with this big needle and not have it make a sound. Do you think I can do it? Please encourage, give me some encouragement. All right. Oh. Do you see that? Whoa, I have made a balloon shish kebab and no sound at all. Alrighty. Well, that was a fun intro demonstration, but I am also going to be doing a little bit of art on stage. It's a science, it's also art. Um, I have been feeling a little lonely in social isolation, so I'm gonna make myself a balloon animal friend. We didn't used to always have plastic or rubber to make our balloons out of, um, so we had to use something else. Can you guys guess what it was? In the past, we used to use something kind of gross to make our balloons out of. Ooh, tying balloons is challenging. Ooh. Oh, Ashley, any suggestions? No suggestions, only uh, it was dried animal guts. That's right, dried animal guts, which is pretty gross to be making balloons out of. But don't worry, I'm not gonna be making any animals. Uh, I'm gonna, not gonna be making any balloons out of animals. I'm gonna be making an animal out of a balloon. All right, let's get us a nice balloon. I think I'm gonna call her, I think I'm gonna call her Laika after the first dog in space. This is Laika Jr., everyone, Laika Jr. All right. Stay. Oh, I think she needs some obedience training. Alrighty. Let's move on to another demonstration. Now, I am a chemist and I love chemistry and sharing it with people. So we are going to blow up or inflate a balloon with chemistry. So I have some vinegar on stage and I have some baking soda. We are going to mix the two and create a balloon. Alrighty. First, I'm going to pour the vinegar into my vessel. Ooh, oh, a little messy there. And then I'm going to get oh, some baking soda in this balloon. All right, there you go. Oh, uh, I normally have a volunteer to help me with this. Ah, ah, ah. You know what? Good thing I prepared one ahead of time. There is the same setup. I have the baking soda in the balloon and the vinegar in our vessel. Are you ready to see this balloon inflate? Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, I didn't add the vinegar. You need two things to make a chemical reaction. So let's see if I can retry it with both of the ingredients. One ingredient alone never works out. Alrighty, do, do, do. Three, two, one. Oh, yay! Success! That's why you never give up on the first try. Whoa! Now, this looks like a closed system. That means like it's completely sealed. No air can leave or, um, or enter. But where did all this air come from that inflated this balloon? Write some suggestions if you uh, have any guesses for where the air came from. Now, the air, did you write those answers? I'm gonna give you the answer. Alrighty, the air comes from a reaction between the baking soda and vinegar. 
When they come together, they create a new thing. And in this case, it's the gas carbon dioxide. Now, there is a lot of carbon dioxide in our balloon, but similarly, when you breathe in, when you breathe out, when you breathe out, you also give off carbon dioxide. So the gas inside this balloon is the exact same gas as if you were to blow up a balloon using your breath. Alrighty, we have some fun uh, baking soda vinegar reactions you can do at home. Uh, a video made by one of my colleagues, Nasali, will show you a great experiment. for joining us. Uh, we have two balloon astronauts that we are going to send to fake space. Now, who do we want to send? Should we send rotund balloon astronaut or like a two space dog? You know, since it's science world, I think we should probably do both. Alrighty, but how do we get a pocket of space here on center stage at science world? This is a vacuum chamber, similar to the vacuum of space. Now, a vacuum is an area where there isn't very much air. This uh, vacuum chamber is hooked up to a pump. The pump pushes the air out of our chamber so that there is very little air left inside. I'm going to stick our balloon astronaut into our space capsule, and we'll do a space countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Whoa! 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 He's taking up my entire capsule space. That is crazy. Alrighty. Now, do you think he's always going to stay this size? Or do you think he's going to explode when we reintroduce him to Earth's atmosphere? Uh, let's see. Oh, he re returned to his original size. Now, what happened there? Why did our balloon astronaut expand? Our balloon astronaut expanded because there is more air inside of our balloon than outside of our balloon. So you might have seen our air show and know that air goes from areas of high pressure inside the balloon to areas of low pressure outside of the balloon in the vacuum. Alrighty, let's try it like a space dog. Oh, we have some questions in the chat. Speaking of here, want to see that space dog go to space? Want to see the space dog go to space? Okay, I have to warn you guys. I have sent many dogs to space here on center stage, and sometimes it doesn't work out so great. But let's hope it's different for Leica too. Alrighty. Ah. Oh. Oh no. Ah. Get in there. Oh. Ugh. Ugh. All right. Let's seal this down. Hook it up. Ooh. Ooh. Alrighty. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Ooh. Ah! Ooh. Oh no! Ah! Oh no! Leica, you're just a tube now. Oh, so much, so much more of an unsuccessful mission than with our balloon astronaut. Don't worry, I will bury these remains uh, in a respectful place. Alrighty. Um, there's uh, more activities you can do at home with balloons. I have been uh, putting together some fun activities for you to do at home. Let's, let's show them what we have. Today you'll be keeping your very own pet yeast. Everything you need to do this activity is pictured below. I used white sugar, but feel free to experiment with other types of sugar. I don't own a funnel, but I made my own by rolling up a piece of paper. The yeast I use in this demonstration is baking yeast. 
the kind you would use to make bread. To get started, open up your yeast and pour it into your balloon using your funnel. Add about a tablespoon of sugar into your balloon. Feel free to experiment with this amount. Next, you're gonna wanna add warm water to your balloon. You can also experiment with the temperature of this water. Finally, make sure you tie off your balloon as soon as possible. This prevents any of the gas produced by our yeast from escaping early. The yeast feed on the sugar we added. 30 minutes later, the yeast have produced a lot of carbon dioxide gas as a byproduct of their feeding. An hour later, they've produced even more gas. Show us how much carbon dioxide your yeast can produce using the hashtag show us your science. Hello everybody, I'm going, I'm back again with more balloons uh, to show you. But normally for this one, I would have a volunteer and it just so happens I have many people helping me here today. I'm not alone in the building. We have the wonderful Ashley on the chat. We got Stefano on the camera and we got Jeff on the computer and we got Brian on drums, but not really, <laughs> no drums today. Alrighty, Stefano, would you be willing to be a volunteer in my show? Come on up, come on up. Alrighty. Thank you so much for joining us here, six feet apart. Alrighty, so Stefano, today I'm going to teach you a very important life skill. I'm going to teach you how to blow up a balloon and have it stay inflated without tying a knot. Do you believe that you can do it? All right, we have some indecision here. All right, we have to do the important steps first. You have to have a blue balloon. Do you got your blue balloon? Okay, blue is the only balloon that this works with. Put the balloon out in front of you with both hands. Both hands, yes, all right. Three circles counterclockwise. One, two, three. Three hops on your left foot. One, two, three. A reverse balloon like this, one reverse balloon, and then you must hit the highest note you possibly can. Are you ready? Ah! Ah! Higher step note, higher step note. Ah! Not that high. Alrighty. Uh, let us, I think our balloons are ready. Let us try. Face up. Maybe it doesn't work with a pump, but mine's okay. Ah, do I have a trick up my sleeve? Am I tricking Stefano into looking very silly on stage? Please tell us in the chat while we run another video, video for you guys. Think about what trick I could be using. Hello everybody, my name is Justine. And if you're anything like me, you've left the dollar store with a handful of balloons and you've wondered, how many balloons would it take to lift me off the ground? Today, we're gonna to be doing an experiment to figure out just that. All you need is a balloon, like this one, uh, a scale, and several household objects. It can be anything as long as you can tie it to a balloon string. I'm gonna be using my water coloring supplies. So I've tied my water coloring brush along with some water coloring sponges to a balloon to see how many of them it takes to sink the balloon. <laughs> the balloon could support 4.11 grams. So one Justine weighs approximately 65 kilograms. That's 65,000 grams. Meanwhile, one balloon can support approximately 4 grams. To find out how many balloons it would take to lift me off the ground, we have to take my weight, 65,000 grams, and divide it by four grams, the weight that the balloon can support. The amount of balloons we would need is 16,250 balloons. That is a lot of balloons. And quite frankly, I'm not interested in traveling upwards through Earth's atmosphere. Thank you for joining us. If you have a similar video, please share it with us using the hashtag show us your science. 
Alrighty, welcome back. I actually did the calculations for how much it would cost for me to get all those balloons, and it ended up being something around $30,000, which I don't think is a really good investment for me right now. Alrighty, um, so, uh, of course, there are no magic tricks at Science World, uh, only science. The trick I had up my sleeve to surprise Stefano was a tiny little marble in our balloon. Now, when I blow up the balloon, inflate it with my breath, it creates more air inside of our balloon than around us. And if you remember the air show, uh, areas where there's more air want to flow to areas where there's less air. So when I blow the balloon and have the ball inside, the air pushes the ball towards the exit, blocking the entrance, sealing off the balloon, giving you a nice sealed balloon with uh, a nice sealed balloon with no knot. Alrighty. So answering questions like how many balloons are, can lift me off the ground and doing fun demos and tricking some of my um, fellow staff members is some of my favorite memories here at Science World. And unfortunately, our doors are closed right now, but a lot of us are really hard at work. Um, if you are able to, please, please, please consider donating so that we can continue to ignite wonder and empower dreams. Alrighty, it's my final demonstration. The most explosive, the most exciting demonstration of the balloon show, the grand finale. But before we get on to the grand finale, I gotta, I gotta think about safety for such an impressive demonstration. I already got my eye goggles on, I got my hair tied back, so my hair is protected, my eyes are protected. Oh, oh, I, there might be some, there's going to be some fire in this, uh, in this demonstration, so I'm going to have my handy dandy fire extinguisher within arm's reach. And I am also going to be wearing some hearing protection because I have to do some, th I have to do stuff with my hands and this uh, demonstration is very, very, loud. Now I have these balloons in the background right here and you probably thought that they were full of helium and that would be a good guess. However, they are not full of helium. Helium is an inert gas. That means it doesn't react. So, uh, so it's used a lot in party balloons where there is a possibility of meeting some fire. This uh, gas is very flammable. It's hydrogen gas. You can see it floats like helium because both of them are lighter than most components of air. And I am going to do, I'm going to light this balloon on fire. And we will have a giant fireball of doom on stage. Alrighty. Let's get ready. I got my safety. I got my ears. I got my goggles. I got my, uh, I got my hair. I got my, I got my fire extinguisher. I'm gonna move over to the other side because I am right-handed, and I'm going to start by lighting the match. Feel free, of course, to turn down your speaker volume if you get a little squeamish about these things. Alrighty, we have a lit match. All right, let's get ready. Three, two, and this has been the Balloon Show, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us virtually. If you have any questions in the chat about chemistry, about balloons, about anything, uh, feel free to type it in the chat right now. Uh, yes? Mmm, if someone went to space without a spacesuit. So uh, it would be very, very bad is the answer. Uh, it's really, really cold up in space um, and there isn't much air there, so you would suffocate. And similar to the balloon, the pressure inside your body would be higher than the uh, pressure out so outside of your body. So you could expect a little bit of expansion. expansion. Yeah, but great question. Ooh, 
rainbows are made? Oh, that is not my area of expertise. But perhaps Stefano has a great answer for this. Stefano? Actually, we've got lots of resources on our website that they can check out. And we've got some shows for science videos coming up and a really fun rainbow one coming down the pipe. So check out our YouTube channel and we will have a rainbow demo just for you. Alrighty, rainbow demos on the channel. Awesome. Any other questions? Uh, Ooh, can I explode the other balloon behind it? Do we have, do we have time for that? Can we do it? Uh, I guess, I guess I can. I had it as a backup, but just for you, I will explode my backup balloon. Again, I have to put on all my protective gear. Feel free to turn down your uh, volume once more. Everything is looking good. Everything is looking safe. Alrighty, let's light this match. Match is lit. And three, two, one. Congratulations! Thank you so much!